Volcanic eruptions. A volcanic eruption is a geological phenomenon that occurs when magma, composed of molten rock, gases, and solid fragments, is expelled from the Earth's interior to the surface through an opening in the Earth's crust called a volcano. Magma is formed from the partial melting of rocks in the Earth's mantle. This magma is less dense than the surrounding rocks, and therefore tends to rise toward the surface. As the magma ascends, it creates pressure in magma chambers beneath the Earth's surface. This pressure can increase over time. When the pressure becomes sufficiently high, it can breach the Earth's surface through an opening known as a volcanic crater. This opening can be located at the summit of the volcano or on its flank. It may involve the sudden release of gases dissolved in the magma, the fragmentation of solid rocks into smaller pieces, and the propulsion of volcanic material in the form of ash, rocks, and lava through the volcano's opening. Lava is the magma that has reached the surface. Depending on its viscosity and temperature, it can flow quickly as fluid lava or more slowly as viscous lava. Large amounts of volcanic ash and gases are ejected into the atmosphere. Ash consists of fragments of rocks pulverized by the volcano, while gases include water vapor, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and other components. Pyroclastic flows are hot flows of gas, ash, and rock fragments that rapidly descend down the slopes of the volcano. They are extremely dangerous and can travel at very high speeds, devastating everything in their path. Additionally, lahars, volcanic mud flows, earthquakes associated with volcanic activity, and even tsunamis can occur if the eruption takes place underwater. Earthquake also referred to as a tremor or seismic shake. An earthquake is a shaking of the Earth's surface, resulting from a sudden release of energy in the Earth's crust that creates seismic waves. Earthquakes can vary in intensity, from those so weak that they cannot be felt to those violent enough to damage or destroy structures. Earthquakes are generally caused by the movement of tectonic plates in the Earth's crust. When the edges of the plates meet, they can move relative to each other, causing stress along geological faults. This accumulated stress over time can result in a sudden release of energy when the fault finally ruptures, causing an earthquake. In addition to tectonic faults, other factors such as volcanic activity, collapse of underground caverns, and human activities such as mining or reservoir construction can also trigger earthquakes. There are different types of geological faults that can cause earthquakes. Horizontal displacement fault or strike-slip fault. Tectonic plates slide horizontally past each other. Vertical displacement fault or up-down fault. One tectonic plate moves up or down relative to another. Inclined displacement fault or tear fault. Tectonic plates move at an angle to each other. When the epicenter of an earthquake is located at sea, the seabed can be displaced enough to cause a tsunami. Earthquakes can also trigger landslides. The initial rupture point of an earthquake is called the hypocenter or focus. The epicenter is the point on the Earth's surface directly above the hypocenter. The Richter scale is one of the most common ways to measure the intensity of an earthquake. Earthquakes of low magnitude, less than 4.0, are usually imperceptible or cause little damage. Moderate magnitude earthquakes, from 4.0 to 6.0, can cause localized damage. High magnitude earthquakes, greater than 6.0, can cause significant damage and loss of life, especially if they occur in densely populated areas. Tsunami. The term tsunami comes from the Japanese language, meaning harbor wave. It is a phenomenon that occurs in the ocean or other bodies of water and is triggered by seismic disturbances, such as underwater earthquakes, submarine volcanic eruptions, underwater landslides, or meteorite impacts. When a seismic disturbance occurs beneath the ocean, the energy released causes a vertical displacement of water, forming a series of long and high amplitude waves known as tsunami waves. These waves travel at very high speeds in open ocean, reaching speeds of hundreds of kilometers per hour, but their height is relatively small, often going unnoticed in deep waters. As tsunami waves approach the shore, their speed decreases due to interaction with the ocean floor and coastal topography. At the same time, the height of the waves increases significantly as water is forced to to accumulate in shallow areas near the coast. This results in devastating tsunami waves that can reach heights of tens of meters when they hit the land. They can cause massive devastation in affected coastal areas. Their destructive waves are capable of flooding vast stretches of land, destroying buildings, infrastructure, and entire communities. Secondary damages may include contamination of drinking water due to seawater inundation, critical damage to all infrastructure such as power and water supply systems, and the risk of landslides. Tsunamis cannot be predicted, but areas with potential risks can prepare themselves with warning systems and evacuation programs. Tropical Cyclone A tropical cyclone is a rapidly rotating storm system characterized by a low-pressure center, a closed, low-level atmospheric circulation, strong winds, heavy rain, and a spiral arrangement of thunderstorms. Tropical cyclones carry heat and energy away from the tropics and transport it towards temperate latitudes, which plays a 
significant role in regulating global climate. They typically form over large bodies of relatively warm water, usually with temperatures above 26.5 degrees Celsius. They derive their energy from the evaporation of water from the ocean surface, which eventually condenses into clouds and rain when moist air rises and cools to saturation. When atmospheric conditions are favorable, such as moisture and weak vertical wind shear, a low-pressure area begins to develop over the ocean. They have a characteristic structure, including a low-pressure center known as the eye. The eye is a relatively calm region with light winds and clear skies. Around the eye, there is a wall of dense, stormy clouds called the eye wall, where winds are strongest and precipitation is most intense. Depending on the wind intensity, tropical cyclones are classified into different categories. The Saffir-Simpson hurricane scale, commonly used in the North Atlantic and Eastern Pacific, classifies cyclones into five categories, from one to five, based on wind speed. Typhoon, a name given to a tropical cyclone formed in the Northwest Pacific. Hurricane, a name given to a tropical cyclone formed in the Atlantic Ocean or Northeast Pacific. Extratropical cyclone, occur in mid-latitude regions, formed in areas distant from tropical regions. In the Northern Hemisphere, extratropical cyclones rotate counterclockwise, while in the Southern Hemisphere, they rotate clockwise. Storm, a storm, also known as an electrical storm, lightning storm, or thunderstorm, is a meteorological phenomenon characterized by the presence of lightning and thunder, as well as heavy rain and strong winds. A storm typically contains the following features. Lightning, sudden and intense electrical discharges that occur within the storm. They are caused by the separation and collision of particles within the storm cloud. Thunder, the sound produced by lightning as it heats the air around it explosively, rapidly expanding it and creating a sound wave. Heavy rain, which can result in flooding, especially in urban areas with insufficient drainage. Strong winds capable of causing damage to structures, trees, and power lines. And hail, ice pieces falling from the storm cloud that can cause significant damage. Storms form when there is a combination of heat, moisture, and atmospheric instability. Warm, moist air rises rapidly due to daytime heating or the convergence of air masses of different temperatures. As the warm air rises, it cools and condenses, forming clouds known as cumulonimbus. Within these clouds, the process of electrical charge separation occurs, resulting in the formation of lightning and thunder. Tornado is an extremely powerful and destructive meteorological phenomenon, characterized by a column of intensely rotating air extending from the base of a storm cloud to the Earth's surface, taking on a funnel or cone shape. Wind speeds can exceed 300 miles per hour. Tornadoes typically form an association with severe storms, particularly those generated by supercells, which are large, long-lived storms with persistent rotation. Within a supercell, rising currents of warm, moist air can create a region of vertical rotation known as a mesocyclone. If conditions are favorable and the mesocyclone is strong enough, a downward rush of air can occur, creating horizontal rotation. When this horizontal rotation is tilted into the vertical by the storm's updraft, a tornado forms. The width of a tornado can vary from just a few meters to over 1.6 kilometers, with wider tornadoes typically associated with more significant damage. Tornadoes are known for their extremely high capacity to cause extreme and devastating damage, leaving a path of destruction along their trajectory that can extend for many kilometers, leaving entire communities in ruins. They are classified according to the enhanced Fujita scale in the United States, based on observed damage intensity and estimated wind speed. The scale ranges from EF0 to EF5, with EF5 tornadoes being the most intense and devastating, with winds exceeding 200 miles per hour. Tornadoes occur most frequently in North America, particularly in the central and southeastern regions of the United States, colloquially known as Tornado Alley. The United States and Canada have by far the most tornadoes of any country in the world. Drought. A drought is a period of drier than normal conditions. It is generally defined as a deficiency of precipitation over an extended period of time, usually a season or more, resulting in water scarcity. It can be caused by various factors, such as overall precipitation deficiency, meaning environmental climatic conditions that generate few conditions for rain. Dry season, the El Nino phenomenon, erosion and human activities, among other reasons. Blizzard, also known as a snowstorm, is a meteorological phenomenon characterized by extreme weather conditions associated with heavy snowfall, strong winds, and low visibility. It typically occurs in cold regions, mainly during winter, when there is sufficient moisture and temperatures below freezing for precipitation to turn into snow. Blizzards are often caused by low-pressure systems that bring cold, moist air from the ocean to colder continental areas, resulting in the formation of storm clouds that produce heavy snow. Snow can fall rapidly and accumulate in large quantities over a short period of time. Blizzards are also characterized by strong winds that blow the accumulated snow, further reducing visibility and creating an even colder sensation. Flooding, an event that occurs when an area is submerged by an excessive amount of water. This water can come from various sources, such as heavy rainfall, rapid snowmelt, river overflow, tropical storms, or tsunamis. The accumulation of large volumes of water in a particular area can occur in rivers, 
lakes, reservoirs, urban areas, or on flatlands prone to flooding. In coastal areas, flooding can occur due to tropical storms, tsunamis, or high tides. Human alterations to the environment often increase the intensity and frequency of floods. Changes in land use, such as deforestation and removal of wetlands, alterations to watercourses, such as dams, and larger environmental issues, such as climate change and sea level rise. Wildfire. A wildfire is an unplanned and uncontrolled fire that spreads rapidly through dry vegetation, forests, brushlands, or natural areas. Wildfires can be ignited by a variety variety of causes, including natural lightning strikes, human activities such as careless campfires, agricultural burning, uncontrolled campfires, improper disposal of cigarettes, fireworks, agricultural or industrial machinery, and even deliberate criminal arson activities. Weather conditions can increase the likelihood and intensity of wildfires. These include high temperatures, low relative humidity, strong and dry winds, and long periods of drought. The behavior of fire in a wildfire can be influenced by a number of factors, including topography, such as slope and orientation, type and moisture content of vegetation, wind, and relative humidity. They can have devastating impacts, including loss of human lives and injuries, destruction of properties, including homes, infrastructure, and natural resources, degradation of natural habitat, and impacts on biodiversity, adverse effects on air quality due to the release of smoke and pollutants. Negative economic impacts include firefighting costs, loss of tourism revenue, and damage to agriculture and the forestry industry. I will make more videos like this. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe and help the channel grow. I made a video about liberalism. Go check it out. See you later.